In this part of the course, we'll be focusing on digitizing. Digitizing is one of the most useful tools in uh, GIS, and you'll find uh, many of the applications, ways to do it right, how to avoid and correct errors, and also how to transform objects within ArcGIS using the editing features. First, we'll focus on the digitizing process. One of the most important questions is the first one, which is, why would we digitize? There are several different reasons that we digitize in GIS and reasons that make digitizing very useful. First of all is the creation of new maps. You can use digitizing to create new map layers and feature classes going off of existing data and make corrections to that data as you go along. You also might integrate data into a map in order to set up uh, new mapping features and, uh, and then correct errors that you might find. We find, of course, as you've already noticed, that there are mistakes in mapping data that we have in GIS data, and you can then use digitizing and editing tools to correct those errors. You also might find that you have missing features within data sets. We encountered this in Geography 1700 towards the end of the semester when you were working on uh, land cover analysis for the Lakeland campus. In that case, we had an ortho photograph that did not show the Holden University Center. Through digitizing, you could potentially integrate a new ortho photo from a newer year and digitize that feature and put it into the county GIS buildings layer data set. And then you would have it for whatever analysis you're going to do. There are lots of other reasons you might digitize as well, such as being able to integrate certain types of data that might be ignored by other data sets and uh, being able to operate at a larger map scale or potentially generalized data for applications to a smaller map scale. We'll talk a little bit about two different major types of digitizing. There are two main types of digitizing. One is manual digitizing and the other one is heads up digitizing. As the pictures show, manual digitizing is a blast from the past. This was a technology that was used quite frequently in the 1980s, 1990s, and into the decade of the aughts between year 2001 or so and uh, 2010. And, um, and oftentimes what was being done was that this type of manual digitizing was done in order to create the initial digital versions of analog materials, such as soil manuals or plat maps or CAD drawings that were being put into GIS use. The way manual digitizing works is that it connects a feature, uh, a tablet, uh, which is used in order to trace features. So you set up a coordinate system and then you basically trace over the features. As you can see from uh, the diagram there that shows a topographic map, the initial creation of these digitized maps was extremely time consuming and painstakingly detailed work. It also explains in part why you might find errors in data that was at one time manually digitized. For example, within the soil survey manual data, there can be mistakes and uh, there are lots of disclaimers typically that are located uh, in the metadata of various data sources, depending on how they've been generalized or have been digitized and to what level of accuracy uh, was expected at that time. What you'll more likely encounter and which, what you'll be doing in your lab assignments is heads up digitizing. Heads up di digitizing uses images on the computer screen and you trace the features over using your mouse functions. It's named heads up digitizing because you focus on the screen. And as you'll see, there are many different uh, features and tools in ArcGIS that you can use in order to digitize appropriately for the target data that you're creating. So next we'll take a look at data capture and basic and advanced digitizing tools. So like everything else in the world of GIS, you need to be aware of the type of data that you're working in. Are you creating points or lines or polygons? And you'll make those decisions before you start your digitizing session. The Create Features dialog box is a very useful box that where you will select the file that you are digitizing in 
and then also what type of construction tools are you using for that particular digitizing session. With lines and polygons, you'll typically use the straight segment tool. And the length and angle of the tool depends on how you use it on the screen. One of the features that's very useful within ArcGIS is that you have the ability to snap your uh, vertices and your nodes uh, to other features on a separate layer. This allows you to specify what type of snapping you want. So for example, in one of your labs, you'll be looking at the Aaron Street area of Pittsburgh once again, and you'll be creating some new polygons by snapping the, uh, the, snapping the digitized polygon uh, to the other feature class. Another tool that's very useful is the trace tool. And the trace tool allows you to simply uh, run your mouse, if you're in that setting, along another line from another feature class and trace the formation of that line and integrate it into the data that you're creating. That's very useful for working in areas where you might have rivers or coastal features that are very complicated in terms of shape, or you had, could have complicated political boundaries or what have you. The generalized tool creates features for use at small scales with less detail in order to preserve basic shapes, but to allow you to modify and eliminate some of the detail as needed. So for example, if you generalize the census tiger water features at, at a small scale, you can see that, uh, that you have more detail than you need, and there's, there are some errors in the data as well. The generalized tool allows you to eliminate unneeded lines and simplify the look and also deal with error correction. Smoothing is very helpful because it smooths sharp angles in a polygon to improve the aesthetic or cartographic quality. So here's the uh, polygon before and after smoothing. <coughs> Cutting polygons can, polygons can be very useful because you can create two polygons from one original polygon. So for example, you might need to divide a parcel. Use the cut polygon tool and you simply create two polygons and add the details to the data set for the second polygon. Another useful tool is to be able to move and rotate features. So here's a polygon that's simply misaligned. You know what the size is of the polygon you'd like to place and where you want to put it. This is one of the tasks that you'll be doing in the lab. And you can then use that tool to move and rotate the polygon within your data set and uh, go on from there. And that concludes the uh, first section on digitizing. In the next section, we'll look at some other uh, functions related to ArcGIS and some examples that you'll be using in this chapter in the lab manual.